Welcome to the Get Through America podcast. We sit down with amazing people who do life in our community and those who are from Guthrie, Oklahoma. We believe every story should be told. I'm your host, Hetty Coleman. Today, I am sitting down with Maneka Gibbs. Before we jump into this conversation with Maneka, would you please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast, also to the YouTube, and leave a review. It would mean the world to us. Maneka, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. So glad to have you here. I want to make sure that we have your, yep, we do. The uh, What do you call the thing on oh, top of your head a, there? It's a pom-pom. Uh, it's a, a pom-pom. The pom-pom. pom-pom. Uh, everyone can see the pom-pom because you just got the pom-pom. Is that okay to tell yes, the world that you yes. just got it? Where'd you get it from? I did. I got it from Sealed with a Kiss in downtown Guthrie. Um, So I lost my pom-pom because I have this really great friend who has a baby that's really into textures. My friend Kai. She owns Guthrie Nutrition, and uh, he's really, really into textures. And so he he pulled my pom pom off when we were having dinner at Senior Lopez. Oh, okay. Um, wonderful place to eat. And uh, he decided he needed to eat it. Well, then I definitely didn't want to put it back on my hat. Okay. <laughs> right. I could. I could have. I, you could have. Yes. It- it probably wouldn't have been the same. Definitely not the same <laughs> after it's been in a baby's mouth. Um, so I decided to go by Sealed with a Kiss where they had a chamber coffee there. Okay. And so I first saw these really great palms. Now, Heather Dunnigan has a palm like this on her hat. Heather Dunnigan, Dunnigan Farm? Yes. Okay. She has one too. And um, I've been really envious of the palm on her hat. But now I had an excuse to get my own palm. Right? And you got it, and it looks great. And I got it, and it looks great. Um, they're they're a little ex, um, uh, yes, expensive yeah, side. Yeah, they're pricey. They're pricey, because but for they're, for they're the right real. reason. Yeah, yes. I was about to say because they're real, and typically whenever you pay for something that's real, yes. the price goes up. It's kind of like leather, up. fake yes. leather versus buying real leather. Yes, except for they have a new name for fake leather. What is it? Vegan. Vegan. Ah. Yes, yes. Now you can go with faux, or or you can use a trendy term, and you can say it's vegan. So faux used to be before vegan hit. Yeah, now, now it's cool. Just call it vegan. Gotcha, gotcha. And it ma- it probably makes people feel more like okay, we can rock vegan because we can, yeah, 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 like, yeah. It makes, yeah, you it, feel makes it legit. Yes, yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, that's all, all good in the hood. Instead now, of pleather. <laughs> oh, that's what we used to call it. We used to totally yeah, call it pleather. pleather. It's really shiny. <laughs> that's pleather. Yeah, yes. it's like, this is not pleather. It's vegan. And what about like uh, pleather couches or sofas? Like I love to sleep on the couch sofa, but if it's vegan, if it's a vegan couch, if it's vegan, <laughs> they get so warm. <laughs> they do. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. There's, there's no, there's no breathing. Ah, so that's the reason it gets warm. Yes, that, that's gotcha. I mean, it's a telltale, right? If somebody's like, ooh, sit on my fine leather couch. It's genuine. Yes. And you sit on it, and you're like, it's not breathing. <laughs> it's hot. Something, something's the matter. Something is going something, on. Something, something is real, wrong. I'm getting real toasty sitting on this genuine <laughs> unleather couch. It must be vegan. It must be vegan, It must be vegan. Must Somebody be vegan. lied to you. Now, we were talking about... Uh, you were you did a podcast yesterday for the Guthrie Chamber. Yes. While you were there, mm-hmm. uh, Chris Evans, who uh, is the founder of Guthrie News Page, for those who may not know who Chris Evans is. Yes. And then you were in the studio, but he had on some brand new, fresh, hey dudes. Yes. And so is it, talking about fake, or real versus fake, is there fake hey dudes? There are fake hey dudes. Really? Yes. Like Walmart sells them? Um, I don't, sh- I'm not sure if Walmart sells them. I had some. Oh, did you? <laughs> yes, for sure. I had some in my store and they had some. Oh, you had some fake, you had some fake, hey dudes at your store? I did. Now, did they sell? Yes, but I didn't mark them up or pretend they were fake for <laughs> sure. Everybody knew. Everybody it knew. It was not like I was no. trying to sell these mm-hmm. off as real hey. Did they, no. well, I'm sure they didn't say hey dudes on they the don't. shoe or anything. No, but they were corduroy and they were so cute and they had like fur. Listen, girls going to buy it if it's cute. Yeah, yeah, it don't matter. No. Then that's the great thing I feel like about uh, ladies versus guys is like, like and I, I think now it's a little bit more safe to wear stuff that's not the brand, like yes. for guys. But back in the day, 
Like, girls could wear anything, but let a guy show up in something that was not. No, I agree with that. That's why it is so much harder uh, to retail for men. Mm, oh. Even now. Okay. Even now. Plus, men don't just, like, peruse, right? Men don't roll up into a boutique and be like, hmm, I wonder if there's some cute jeans in here for me. Or I wonder if this place carries my favorite branded T-shirt. No. Yeah. Mm -mm, absolutely not. No. Men know exactly what store to go buy your jeans. You know exactly what store to go buy your favorite T-shirt. Yeah. You know exactly what store to go to go buy a dress suit. Yeah. You know which store to go in to buy a belt. Yeah. And to buy your sneakers, not the same store to go buy your dress shoe. Like men have your 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 habit creatures. You know exactly where to go to buy exactly what you want, exactly what you need. Is you even know what aisle it's on. And when they moved it, that's not okay. <laughs> that's not okay. That's not okay. Or ladies are not like that. No, we don't care. Shopping is fun. It's like a it's a pastime. Got you. Yeah. You enjoy it. We enjoy it. But because of that, kudos to you because your store is targeted primarily to women, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can bring in some hey dudes that are not hey dudes and you can still sell them. Yes. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's cool. Like for hey dudes, it's not quite like leather. Meaning no. that the only reason it's not a real hey dude is because you just don't have the name on it. That's right. Leather doesn't even have to ne have a name on it per se. Like I'm not going to. Say, I guess you had Wilson's leather, but that mm -hmm. was a store brand, not right. So much about the leather itself, but you just wanted Wilson's leather. Do you, mm -hmm. do you, you know, I remember okay. Wilson's yeah. leather. And so um, it's a whole store. It used to be next whole... to J.C. Penney's and Penn Square Mall. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You were all over Wilson. No, yeah. I was just all over Penn Square Mall. <laughs> <laughs> Cause ladies peruse. Is that what you said? Ladies peruse listen, and shopping. Listen, we do her everything was. When I put a Build-A-Bear in there right next to the lids, I was like, what's happening? Why is there a Build-A-Bear over there? Why is it next to lids? This is weird. That messed up That's everything. That's odd placement. Now, since you um, own a shop, Mm -hmm. Talk about the shop that you own. We're going to do this completely backwards, but go That's ahead and talk fine. about the, go ahead and talk about the shop that you own. Uh, so the mercantile is a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it's, it is geared towards women, but I like to have a lot of guy things in there. I've got boys, so you know, I like to be able to gift for men. So you know, I've got wallets in there and pocket knives. I always sell out of pocket knives. I'm a really good pocket knife picker. Nice. Um, pocket knives is a big deal. Pocket knives is a big deal. You know, I mean, you have to have a really good pocket knife, and there's all different kinds of pocket knives, you know. Like, what do you mean by different kinds? I mean, there's utility pocket knives. Oh, okay. Uh, and there's pocket knives that have additional things, like tools on them. And then there's fancier pocket knives where you got smaller ones that have some tooling on them. Or, you know, like they might have, um, I don't know, some ivory on them. You can find those uh, at Linda's store. Which is a heritage collection. Okay. She's got it's, more. It's of right your, next door to you. It, it's two doors down. Two doors down. Yes. And you are located where? Uh, I am at 122 West Oklahoma. So I'm catty corner from the post office. Gotcha. Yes. And I also carry men's soap and men's lotion. And um, I also like to find really cool little gadget things in there for men. There's a brand called Trixie and Milo. And um, they have all different kinds of things they have multi-tools that are kind of cool looking um i had some in there uh they had like these pocket um shot glasses that were really neat and they looked like pocket watches it had a cover on it that looked like a buffalo nickel mm -hmm. I, those are gone i sold out of them <laughs> really they, yeah did you think that they were going to do great like that i did only because they looked really neat it's something where it's got to look neat and have a cool purpose mm -hmm. um and then I've I've kept a brand in there. I they went up on their minimum price, so I don't I didn't carry them this year. But last year for Valentine's Day, I kept a brand called Ballsy. Okay. Mm -hmm. What what was Ballsy? I mean, <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> it's a men's care product. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yep. But you sold out of it. They sold out of it every time, but it it was always really interesting whenever because I would arrange of of people that come in right got you so when the older ladies are coming in and they're inspecting what all is in this kit oh okay for men okay there's all kinds of interesting 
items for in men this, yeah. that are listed in there. And you would think maybe they'd have an opposite reaction, but they giggle <laughs> and then they show their best friend and then they call them over and have them look. It is hilarious. So this is a little entertaining. It is. It, it is, is entertaining for you. Yes. So whenever you have these uh, men's gifts, it's primarily mm -hmm. what you consider what you have. Are yes. More like They're gift definitely items. gifting. Yes. Yeah. Are, are these, so this is women buying these for. Always. Yeah. Yes. Usually it's going to be somewhere where, or if, you know, uh, your husband's like having to accompany your wife and you're in out of town or. You know, she said, oh, I need to run in here real quick. And then she goes in and she gets stuck for 20 minutes because that happens. Yeah. And then you got to come in after her. Uh, at least there's some things that are amusing for you to look at. Gotcha. Or, you know, you might already order it on the Internet and you didn't know I had it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, that happens, too. That <laughs> <laughs> that totally happened. A friend of mine, she came, she was in, and we were visiting, and then her husband came in and said, wait a minute. I've been ordering this. You have this here? Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. That's cool. Yes. And how long have you had your store open now? Um, So a little over two years. I opened in October 2020. Oh, okay. Yes. So October 2020, like during the pandemic. Yes. Like just kind of. It started that year, right? Yes. Uh, pandemic so, 2020? Yes. So I started making candles in February of 2020. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started was making candles. So backtrack, I started making candles as a child with my grandma. And everybody's got a side hustle. And um, there was a candle company going out of business. And a friend of mine pitched in and bought all the equipment. And I started making candles whenever uh oil and gas went south and i thought well if anything i'll just i don't know maybe sell candles also and maybe that'll be my side hustle for a while well then COVID happened and then you don't know what to do yeah right nobody knew what to do then then i'm a working professional all the time how to close my office to at home all the time with my kids and I've never been a stay at home mom. I mean, I'm a go, 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 you know, we're with sports all the time after work, work all day, go home, pick up, leave again, dinner on the fly, you know, kind of mom, not, not stay 24 seven mom. So that was a huge reality check and a change, yeah. a huge change, yeah, a change in, uh, um, really makes you reflect on who you are even as a, as a person individually. Yeah. Because uh, as a, as a mom, just like as a dad, you aren't just a mom. You aren't just a husband or a wife. You aren't just a friend. You're a professional also. Mm -hmm. And if you lose any one key part of those things, who are you? You've are, you've lost part of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's sad. It's like mourning. Yeah. Yeah. It was difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And so now that you have the store, have you felt like that piece of you that almost felt like it was getting taken? I think that's what I hear you say yeah. is now, now um, there. And it's definitely there. Um, it is. I keep saying it. So I, I've been juggling both oil and gas and the store during the busy season. There's no time for oil and gas. Mm. Um, because I make anywhere between 400 and 500 candles a month during candle season. Oh, wow. Wait, candle season? When is candle season? I didn't know there was <laughs> such a thing as candle season. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, you know, candles that, um, uh, aren't... like, is it a smell thing or are you saying the actual, there's an actual candle season? Um, no, it's a uh, more like fall. So when you enter into fall, into winter so it's probably september through january is like candle season okay right so large chains that don't have quality products like <clears throat> bath and body works uh they have to put their candles on sale gotcha um i never have to put my candles on sale i feel like they're already at a pretty good price and now given costs have double for me to make candles um it a case of wax used to cost $75 a case. Now it costs $125 a case. And it's $95 to ship it here. Oh, my goodness. 
Yes. Ninety five dollars, and is that for because there's different fragrances? Or is it just well, that's just the wax, get, just the wax, and just then the wax. you mix the the smell or whatever you would call mm-hmm. it into the yes. So that's part. That's the making of the candle. Yes. So I use a um, hundred percent certified clean burning wax, and I use all essential oils, and all of my oils oils are also so- soap safe. So you can, I mean, I also make soap, so I can use that same oil. You can use it on your skin and it's safe. It's safe on your, on your body. It's safe in the air. Um, my husband's allergic to everything. And so is my youngest son. And I used to make these candles in my home. Huh. Okay. And yeah. so in order to be able to make them in the home, you need to make sure that they're, yeah, there's something that somebody who's always allergic <clears throat> to everything is safe. Can handle it. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, my husband can jump into the cleanest lakes, and I would say we go to Grand, and Jamie can take all his allergy meds, jump into Grand Lake, jump right back into the boat, and looks like he's got a rash all over his oh, whole body. Wow. And that's just normal. Yeah. And so whenever you're making the candles, you're taking that into consideration because you just never know what somebody's allergic to. So you that's want right. something that's going to be the safest thing possible. So was that something that you thought about before you started making the candles or did you start making the candles and you was like, oh my goodness, people could be allergic to it? Like when did you come into well, this? Well, it was knowledge? both um, because also there are people that are sensitive to fragrance. Mm. You know, I had an aunt that we, when we wanted to go shopping, she'd say, okay, well we can go to Dillard's, but we have to stay in the clothes because we can't go over by the perfumes. Well, I love perfume. Mm. Right. Well, fragrance would give her a headache. Got you. And so she'd have a really hard time going into heavy fragranced places. Mm. Um, so she couldn't handle that for very long. So all of my fragrances don't emit anything harsh because it's not fragrance. It's essential oil. Got you. So whenever you're th- thinking about you owning a store mm-hmm. and in your store, you have vendors. Is that mm-hmm. so you have vendors? Do you have to take all that stuff in consideration? Because. You just never know who's going to walk in, fragrances, give them a headache, Mm -hmm. uh, allergic to it if they put it on their skin. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to your vendors before or what does that look like? What does that process look like? I'm just curious. Yeah. Well, a lot of my vendors I already knew before. Okay. Right. So um, I don't, all of the vendors that are there were already friends or started becoming vendors because they shopped there Mm -hmm. Um, and or were, asked to be part of it gotcha and so it wasn't really an issue they probably they already they already used the candles when they came in <laughs> <laughs> they already know about the candles yes. yeah yes and we all share in each other right so um all of our vendors we all we all give each other a discount so oh gotcha gotcha yes. so so what i th- so what i think i hear you say this kind of backtracking you had the candles you were making candles you mm-hmm. stopped um, you figured out how you could continue to sell your candles. And so then you opened up a full blown store mm-hmm. and then you just put vendors around your candles. Right. So I also wholesale a lot of items. So all the home goods are mine and I wholesale those items and sell them in the store. Um, I wholesale some clothing too. Um, I have two boutiques in there. So one of them uh, is my sister-in-law's, which is the black heart okay. and um, she pays rent and also works in the store. And then my friend Rochelle is the Sunrise Connection, and she pays rent, and she works in the store. And then the other vendors are there on a consigned fee. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But I don't section it out necessarily like. You would know that. You would know like, that. It's not no. like Hetty's Corner over no. here, and then, yeah, then uh, Soap Dishes by Leslie over here. It's no. just kind of all mixed together. That's right. Because yeah. um, I look at the mercantile as a community. Mm. So, you know, you we're not sectioned out as a community other than everybody goes to their own home. Yeah. So, you know, in the store, I mean, I keep fan gear pretty much by itself because it's easy to get to. Um, but other than that, you know, if they've got hats are everywhere and jewelry is everywhere, you know, uh, it's a, we're a community in there. And then, you know, if you move things around, I move things around. And as long as everybody gets paid how they're supposed to, it doesn't matter where yeah, it sits it in the store. Where, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter where it's at. Yeah. 
Uh, so, so merchandising that that kind of mm-hmm. goes back to merchandising and how you like lay your stuff out and everything. Uh, that's cool. So let, I, we talked about a little bit about your story. Talked about hey dudes. We talked about candles. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Oklahoma City. So I was born in Oklahoma City and uh, lived there um, until I was about three, and then my parents divorced. My mom is from Oregon, and so then we moved up to Oregon. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then in sixth grade, um, my mom wanted us to come live with my dad. And so we moved to Oklahoma. Gotcha. So you spent a little time in Oregon. Yes. What do, what do you remember most about Oregon? Uh, my mom worked for the University oh, of okay. Oregon. So we spent a lot of time on campus. Gotcha. So uh, my sister and Ashley and I, she's 18 months younger. She lives in Perkins. And... um she raised her kids there. She still has three in school, one graduated already. And um, we spent a lot of time on campus. And um, Eugene and Springfield are a lot like more in Norman, I guess you would okay. say. So yeah. really safe. We used to ride the city bus together everywhere. Okay. Even when we were little. And um, we used to go spend a lot of time at the track and watch. Um, and we used to go watch Jackie join our cursey run. Get out of here. A lot. Are you serious? Serious. So she went to Oregon? She went to Oregon. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, that is super cool. Yeah. You was watching a legend. I know, right? Like, did you know that at the time? Like, or no. did she just so happen to be in the group? Yes, but she obviously stood out. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because she was great then. She was great then. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, then she became Jackie Joyner. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so it's not until you, really like, cool. you, you know, you grow up a little bit and you're yes. like, what? I used to go watch her run. <laughs> like, that's so cool. <laughs> that is cool. You know, those are just things that click whenever you're little and you watch. When you're little, you watch greats, but you watch them because you watch them for a different purpose. You yeah. watch them because you see the potential in people. Yeah. You notice fame when you're older, when people point it out to you. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, like when you were watching, it's kind of like, oh, they're really good. Yes. Yeah, and so then when you get older, you're like, oh, they're good, and they're famous. Like there's something more to them, I guess. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Because when you're little, you don't. No, you don't think about. You don't think about that. Especially the fame of it, right? Well, and back then we didn't have the internet, so like people weren't. <laughs> yeah, like, it's you, not quite like it is now. No, no, you don't learn about it until you watch TV. We didn't have cable, so uh, like so you really you, learn later. You, you learn way later. Like I went on little B TVs. I got really lucky because you're like turn it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you go from Oregon uh, back to Oklahoma City, sixth grade. That was like culture shock. Was it? Really? Oh yeah, because just. The big difference between Oregon and Oklahoma. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's like hippie town, right? Yeah. So uh it and Oklahoma City. So um I started at Oklahoma City schools. Oh, okay. Right. So the first half I so saw second half of sixth grade. So I went from uh undiversified school in Oregon, yeah. right? There, yeah. there was um, one child of color yeah. in my whole grade. Got you. And his name was Jeremiah, and he was mixed. One, Got you. One. Uh-huh. Two, um, I went to Oklahoma City School, and there were five white girls in my grade. Yeah. Um, it was very different. Yeah. I mean, it was very different. It was we wore badges and you went through security and like it, it was crazy. It was like, um, gangster's paradise. almost. like, you was like, what's happening? (laughs) You weren't weren't ready. No. I was like, what happens if I lose my badge? I was like, is somebody going to, what happened? I got to get some wider jeans. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not ready for this. I, I didn't even own a flannel shirt. Yeah. Like, everything was tie-dye. Like, what? What? Yeah. It, Where it, you came from, everything. Yes. Tied. Then you come to this, yeah. I th- yes. I was like, I wore, I had big skirts and, like, flannel. And, I, I mean, I I mean I had jeans, but not, like, jeans. And, like, yeah. yes, it it was interesting. 
and you know, like I don't know how many people have those experiences. Like I've never had the experience where I went from something that was this way to completely different culturally and having to adapt to that. What did that do to you as like, and then that doesn't have to be in a bad way, but just kind of what did that do to you as far as adapting and, and, and changing culturally like that? Like, um, what was something you learned out of that? Uh, it, it definitely, it made me, um, it made me more aware. So it, it made me pay attention a lot more to how other people live. Yeah. Right. So I spent a lot of time. One being really quiet. <laughs> And yeah. I'm not a quiet person, Got but you. I was very quiet. But you you learn to observe a lot. Yeah. Um, and you also learn how to ask questions, mm-hmm. right? Um, because you also learn questions can be offensive. Oh yeah. Um, and and to be sensitive. Yeah. To how people live and how they're raised. Yeah. You definitely learn that too. And you you can learn that you can step on somebody's toes on accident. Mm -hmm. And so you you learn how to be really sensitive to other people and how they feel and that people react to feelings differently. Differently, Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. So you learn in all of that. And then you go from sixth grade, go to seventh grade, eighth grade, and then you change school districts or what? We did. We, we changed school districts. So um, we moved um, and changed school districts. So uh, we knew we couldn't live. We moved where we moved was down the street from my grandma's house. And okay. that's where my dad thought that would be comfortable, which it was just not for school. Mm-hmm. Um And so we moved from Oklahoma City Public Schools to Putnam City Schools, which is in War Acres. Um, And so it it was a much nicer area and um, it was a nicer home. And so we got an opportunity to move there and we moved there and um, that's where we stayed. Gotcha. You went there and graduated from uh, PCO. Yes. Original. Mm-hmm. Now, did you ever do any of the other Putnam City High School? Or you were at original the whole time. No, just original. Got yes, mm-hmm. got you. And so, uh, during that time, you meet Jamie, mm-hmm. right? And what was that? What was that like? So I met Jamie uh, in seventh grade. Um, Jamie's always been really quiet, which is interesting. A lot of people wouldn't call him quiet now. Really? He, I would say he's quiet, but maybe it's when he's around people he don't know, maybe. Like, he doesn't um, know, know me. So whenever right? I always see him, it, it, I would have definitely defi- – like, somebody's like, what's Jamie like? I'd be like, he's kind of quiet. He's kind of quiet. Maybe at first. Maybe at first he can be <laughs> unlike, quiet. I would say unlike you. you right. You come out the bag. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, we're going to know each other real quick. <laughs> 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 but Jamie's talkative. Uh, right. So um, Jamie and I were friends in school, but we ran in different circles. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, Jamie played football and he ran track and um, I was, I was a music kid. So I was in band and choir. Now, would you have been considered a band nerd? Um, no, because I was a nerd. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Now my sister, my sister called me a nerd because she liked to. <laughs> Why? Right? I'd, I'd be in the other room practicing, and my sister said, "Shut up, you suck." I'm like, she's so rude. She was so rude. Oh my goodness. I know, but now she's getting it because her daughter's her daughter's oh, in band, right? Yeah. But she plays trombone. Her daughter's tall. Okay. I know. It's so how unfair. Does she, how does she? Not to jump off, but how does she end up playing the trombone? Oh, but her daughter is tall. She's got arms, right? My oh, sister and I, we don't gotcha. have arms. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, like, yeah. We're like T-Rex, yeah. right? We wouldn't be able to go nowhere. Uh-huh. <laughs> the trombone uh-huh. was never on the list. <laughs> <laughs> My band director was not like, you should play trombone. Yeah, no, Absolutely not. No, yeah. Absolutely not. So they probably saw her length and everything. Like, trombone. Trombone for you, girl. We got a trombone for yes, you. Yes, yes. She got arms for days. We you are playing trombone. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. yes. And she's fantastic. Went to her band concert. She's... At Perkins, she's wonderful. She's doing a great job. That's not an easy instrument. No, no, not at all. So, but no, yep. Yeah, Ashley, Jamie's playing sports. You're you're in a band. Yeah. So we would just, uh, and I was friends with his sisters, right? So Jamie is number two of five. Okay. Okay, and they're all stair set. Like, and how many siblings do you have? Um. So I have. I also am 
one of five. But, oh, okay. Um, yes, I like, get it. We're separate. So the only one I was raised with all the time is my youngest sister. Gotcha. Because my mom had kids from different marriages. Gotcha. Okay. And so the only one that I live with mostly is my younger sister. That's gotcha. 18 months from me. Okay. Okay. So usually I'll, I just refer to her because, yes, you know, in, in school and you got one that close to you, they're your nemesis. <laughs> like she sells your clothes. She's always want to mess with your stuff. She gets on the phone when you're on the phone. Oh. Because, you know, back yes, then, you got yeah. one phone. Yeah. You have one phone. And then she gets on the phone and she's like, get off the phone. I'm trying to use the phone. Uh-huh. Because Kids then, don't know anything about that now. No. It's so unfair. It's crazy. It's unfair. It kind of makes you want to get one. Uh-huh. And then, like, <laughs> get a landline. Can you still get landline? I, I guess you can still you get can landline. Get, I'm assuming right? you can. Right? like... Yeah. Like you're trying to figure out how to do three way on your cell phone and you accidentally hang up on somebody. I'm like, I used to be so good at this. Hey, you should say in 2023, we're getting rid of cell phones, doing landlines, doing landlines. (laughs) They would be like, what in the world? But then if you were really cool back then, you would have your own line. Yes, we had one, but we had to share one. Oh, so you had the main house line, then you all had one that you all shared. Uh, yes. Gotcha. We gotcha. had one, that, and that's what I'm talking about. We had one. We had, we had a sharesies. Oh. Yes. You all were awake. I mean, you, you would have been considered cool in my house, like, because we, we barely had a phone, period. Right. We barely had a landline. So that's where I came from, like, at my mom's house. We, was, like, you, we were lucky if we had food uh-huh. at my mom's house. Yeah. Like, I'm climbing the cabinets. I'm like, hey, look, I found this bag of rice. <laughs> Like, what can Let's I put go. in here? Uh, yeah. I'm like, mm, got any milk? Nope. No milk. I'm like, mm, breakfast rice it is. Got some sugar. That yeah. works. It's some hot water. Get it Listen, going. Listen, I am not above. I am, Get it I am going. not above some powdered milk. I have made plenty of milk in my day out of powdered milk. That has happened in my little life. So yeah. I'm not above it. That's right. I could definitely survive in a bunker. <laughs> You can pull it off. I have had food boxes, okay? I, yeah. This happened. This happened. But once we moved here, it, things got a little bit a little better. Bit. <laughs> I had real milk in my macaroni and cheese, and it was amazing. <laughs> you know, I never knew. I never knew. Yeah, that's good. I'll tell you what, though. I don't think my sister will eat the blue box still. She's like, no, I'm good. When you when you have to eat the blue box and it's like off brand blue box and you don't have milk and you have to eat it with water. What is the blue box? It's the Kraft macaroni and cheese. Is that not the good one? That's the good one. She won't eat that. L- listen. <laughs> Depending on how you have. If you're it. real hungry, <laughs> it is the only thing in the cabinet, and you have no milk and you got no butter. You say you see you the blue water, box different. <laughs> You're looking at ramen and the blue box way different. You've been never eating it ever again. Never. I was not a mac and cheese person growing up. We like, so we had ramen and for some, I don't know how this happened. If, uh, maybe one of my aunt, aunts or uncle can tell me, but somehow my grandfather started getting these big old boxes of uh, ramen noodles. Mm-hmm. And that's all like, we would have that for a day because he would just have so many of them. Yes. And man, we became king of ramen noodles and that's kind of what some periods of our lives that's what we lived off of oh yeah ramen yeah. ramen yeah. for sure did you ever have a syrup sandwich a syrup sandwich no but we eat syrup on biscuits no yeah no syrup sandwich was because you didn't have, definitely didn't have biscuits all we had was bread in the bar a jar of syrup and so you would make syrup sandwiches and that's what you would eat no but i've done it with honey honey yeah no yeah. that's that's upscale too you just Syrup sandwiches. What about mayo? Did you have mayonnaise sandwiches? Um, mayonnaise and cheese. Oh, <laughs> but it wasn't like the good cheese. It's the oily cheese. <laughs> oily cheese. Listen, yeah, it was a free cheese. But mayonnaise sandwiches actually was. Oh man, I think I kind of like. I think I could probably still eat a mayonnaise sandwich. Maybe. I do like some fried bologna though. Oh yeah, make it. Uh, put it in the oven and make it pop up. Did no, you not I, the oven? Did you put it on the stove? Yeah, you just fry it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it, it bubbles up in the middle. Like, I mean, you, you're supposed like to cut that? it. Oh, no. I was wanting mine to pop up like that. What? But, yeah, if you cut it, it wouldn't, it no, wouldn't pop up. No, you got to cut it. No, you should let it pop up. Try it tonight. Do you got some bologna at the house? I'm going to get some bologna. Uh, bring it over. Bologna. I'm going to bring it over to the house. And no. the <laughs> Rowan don't like the bologna cooked. I only like it cooked. He doesn't like Has he had it cooked? 
He's had it cooked. And he doesn't like it? I know, right? Who doesn't like it? It's fried? so good. And it's supposed to be like a little bit burnt. Just yes. on the edges. Oh, yeah, on it the has edges. To be. Yeah, it's yes. going to be just like yeah. a little uh-huh. bit burnt on yeah. the edges. Otherwise, I don't want it. What's wrong with him? I don't know. Next time I see him, I'm going to have to ask him about that. Right? What's wrong with you if you don't like your bologna fried? Who doesn't like fried bologna? <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> the, the restaurants sell it now, don't they? Like, what's that? They do, but they make it thick. They do make it thick, and I'm just not it's okay not real, with that. It's yeah. not right. Like, it's not real. Had, you have to be like pulling the red off. <laughs> the red. Yes, like, <laughs> like what, this is what not is this bologna. Thick this is bologna. <laughs> like, this is bougie. It came and you cut it like you. Sliced Where did it. you buy this from? <laughs> Why is this bougie bologna? Like, this is no bar s. Okay. It must be bar S. It's got, you got to rip it off of there. This is like it's not, not. It's not right. It's not right. At it's all. not right. <laughs> if it was more than a dollar twenty-five, I cannot eat it and put it in the frying pan. We're not doing it. It's not. It's not right. It's My son okay. is gonna be like, "How do you want me to edit this when you are all talking at the same?" He's just be like, "I can't. I can't." He's just gonna leave it on you. Just leave it on her, Kenneth. Just leave it on her. You can't try to talk over it. Uh, all right, let's then let's tell. So you and Jamie friends at some point in your lives, you end up getting married and you end up in Guthrie, America. Is that is that the story? Yes, you guess. That was the that was the uh, the uh, fast forward. We went fast forward. <laughs> We go, we go fast forward. We fast forward. We still gotta, we're gonna go back to hey dudes and everything else. Just, I know. Just, just keep up, everybody. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I lived uh, in Guthrie since '07. So Bryce started in kindergarten. Just, just. Uh, and then uh, Jamie moved up here with us in um, 2013. No, 14. 2014. Is that right? No, 13. I'm getting all my dates wrong. So my family and I moved back together in 2007. So we came together at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quote, unquote. Yes. So Bryce started kindergarten here. And then Rowan started kindergarten here. And he had Miss Henson. Uh, Kara. Kara. Yes. Oh, yeah. Love her. So we used to live um, across the street from Dave, from her husband, from okay. Mima. Uh-huh. Right? She's still Mima. Love her. Debbie. And... When Rowan started kindergarten, his goal was to be taller than Kara. Oh, nice. Right? That's a... Because when he started, he wasn't. Okay. Kara was taller. Yeah. Then he finished kindergarten, he was taller. Oh, wow. He was like, this is crazy. Dude, he was super pumped. He was super pumped. I love to tell him that story now because he feels so dumb. Yeah. He probably like, <laughs> he oh, does. my goodness. He does. Yeah. Kara's like, hey, Ro, do you remember? So did he tell her? Like, was he saying my goal is to be? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Because the next goal is me. (laughs) Okay, because I'm only five foot. (laughs) So then he passed you. Yes, Trace is in second grade, and he's like, Mom, I'm four foot two. I'm almost taller than you. What's his goal now? Like, I I think it's Dad, because he's five nine, right? So Dad's six foot. Okay. Yeah, his goal. He's coming to get you, Dad. Yes. Yes, he's and coming to get you. Unfortunately, Bryce stopped at five. He's like five four. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he was like at Christmas. Bryce said, "Mom, <laughs> <laughs> mom, look, I can, I can rest my head on Rowan's shoulder. This is not okay. <laughs> this is not okay. <laughs> like, this is not. I said, he, he said, here, you guys get in front of the Christmas tree. And take, <laughs> take your picture, right? And I got like a bunch of Christmas trees, but I just picked one, okay? And <clears throat> Bryce said, can, Rowan, can, Trace, can I use your step stool, please? Because he was not going to let his brother, big brother be behind him. <laughs> oh, little brother behind him. Yes. That is funny. It was awesome. That is so funny. That is so <laughs> funny. Well, that's cool. So, it. Yeah, you can't do anything about that. Yeah. No. So, um, what did you have to convince Jamie to come together or was he? No, um, actually I didn't have to convince him. I mean, he was cool with it. You know, at the time uh, he lived across the street from his parents, works for his parents. Um, after he graduated high school, he bought the house across the street. Um, and, uh, he had gotten married shortly after high school and had Haley and, um, when he divorced, he got Haley, uh, custody of Haley in his divorce. And so living across the street was helpful for him, mm-hmm. um, raising daughter by herself. But um, once we got together and he moved up here with the boys and I, then, um, you know, he didn't really need to be close to his, that close to his parents. Gotcha. So um, he was on board. He liked Guthrie as a community coming up here. 
um, and visiting before him and Haley moved up here, and uh, he really liked it up here. It's good. It's mm-hmm. good. He seems like he fits in well. He does. Yeah. He 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 jumps right on in. Yeah. He, <laughs> listen, if he if he's not wearing something Guthrie, he's wearing something OU. Yeah. And if it's not that, he's wearing something Topco because it's work. And you know he he really likes it here too. So That's good. he's gonna volunteer and help out anywhere around here, coach. It's just, I, I don't know. It, you just chip in where you need to. Got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that I, that I love watching about you is like, you always seem like you have your kids friends with you, right? Yes. Like you, you, they hang out a lot. I know they come to y'all's house and there, there's a good group of them. Tell me about being a community mom. What is, that, I just call you community mom. What, what is that <laughs> like for mom. you? Yeah. A community mom. <laughs> like, was that something that just naturally came for you? Or how'd that end up happening? Tell um, me the story behind So I have been, I think my oldest son, his friends started calling me Mama Maneka a long time ago. Um, and then uh, Rowan's friends started calling me Mama Maneka. I, it started with Bryce and his friends, and his friends still come and go mm-hmm. if they want to. And they come and go to the store, and some of them have kids now, which the older kids, they have. some of them have kids now. It's just funny. Yeah. Um, it's great. I love, I love seeing them. Yeah. Um, and they all come up to me wherever I am or – come by the house whenever and they know they can um and then rowan uh that that little group of kids they're extra special they they've been together since first grade and jamie started coaching them in football in first grade and they have stayed together since they just have they go everywhere together they do everything together they they're at my house they're expensive to feed but, you know, you can't just one of them be over and be like, can I spend the night? And the next one comes down. Mom and I can spend the night. And the next one, can I spend the night? And before you know, you're like six or seven, <laughs> maybe eight, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Because can you I, can't just say, okay, you can stay the night tonight. The rest of you have to go home. Right? That doesn't work because you know what happens? They all find somewhere else to stay together. Uh-huh. And so then your boy leaves and yes. he just goes stays wherever and they are. Yes. So, so you, you like just to keep them all in my house. That's right. Yeah. You might as well keep them all together. Like the other night, I think I had six extra. I made two casseroles. Oh my goodness. One for them, one for us. <laughs> <laughs> did, did they just take the casserole up to their room? And, and Oh no, they have to come down to the table. Okay. We so pray. Okay. We go pray. So everybody eats together. Everybody eats yeah. together. We're having dinner. We pray. Yeah, you, that's good. You guys sit at the table. We all sit at the table. Now, we ran out of chairs, so Jamie and I sat in the kitchen at the kitchen table and ate, but they all sat at the table together and, and then prayed. We, that's super that's cool. That's important. So yeah. it's dinner time. We sit and pray. It's snack time. You don't have to sit and pray, but if it's dinner time, we got to sit and pray before we eat. And listen, there was a lot of, don't eat. Don't eat. Don't, don't, don't. Nope. We got to pray. Don't. There was a lot of that. That's good. But I try to put some chips and queso on the table so they can eat that before they ate. <laughs> <laughs> Just before the main meal. Yes. Make sure you pray before the main meal. Yes. Uh, so another cool thing that I like about uh, you and your family is uh, I see you all, and I'm kind of jealous, but you all have the um, the golf cart, and that's kind of how you all get around downtown Guthrie. We do. Yeah. And y'all have one. How many does it seat? Seat. Sit. Seat. Um, well, it depends on how many people you fit on there. Uh, it's an eight-seater. Oh, got you. Right? So it's got four rows of seats. And so, so two. That's our uh, welcome to church wagon. Okay. Right? So, like, if you pull, <laughs> if you, if you pull up to Life Church, that's yeah. what they scroll around uh-huh. and pick you up yeah. in. So I actually picked that up because, you know, we live on Cleveland. Yeah. And there's only parking on one side got of you. the road because the school pickup line is in front of my house. Gotcha. So there's only parking there between two and four thirty <laughs> Monday through Friday. <laughs> so, and so whenever we have family functions or a fun get together, we have people park at Central. Oh, okay. Right. So I found that golf cart online for like two thousand dollars. And I was like, you know what? This is it. I can do this. Is it electric or gas? It's electric. Okay. So we can shuttle people <laughs> from Central. 
<laughs> that is to her house. Oh my goodness. So whenever you schedule an event, you're like, hey, you're gonna park down the street, right by our you can you can do either Cash Safe or our Central. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna come pick you up. Yep. And we go back and forth. Yep. That is hilarious. Yep, we got a shuttle. But it's it's been super useful because then we volunteered around town, right? So like, any <laughs> so festival, now I know who to call. Yes, yeah, now like, I know who to call. I got signs and everything. It says courtesy cart. <laughs> they hang on either side. This is courtesy cart. <laughs> I know where I can get a cart at now. Now, do um, t- thinking about Guthrie and all the parades we have. How many times has this been in the parade? Listen, um, <laughs> well, okay, so we've only had it in like two Christmas parades. Okay. But, oh, were y'all decorated and everything? Yes, and I think the best year we decorated it, we made it the Sooner Schooner. Oh, okay. Like, legit, the top of it. Okay. And oh, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one side said Sooner, and the other side said Boomer. And we didn't find out until afterwards. We were right in front of Santa, and Santa Claus is an OSU fan. <laughs> 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 Santa, Santa should not be a fan of one school. Listen, we we were on the naughty list. Oh my at the goodness, end of that you got nothing. We, you got nothing that year. We, He's we, like, you knew why. <laughs> Santa was a no little irritated. No gifts for you. No <laughs> gifts for you. <laughs> Santa was mad. He was so angry. Usually, if we are in a parade. We it's uh I'm in the back seat of the pickup because Jamie is pulling a float. He's, oh, okay. He's usually pulling okay. a float full of kids doing something. Gotcha. Right. So he's usually pull and I'm usually decorating a float. Gotcha. For whatever. It doesn't it doesn't matter what is football, cheer, softball, some, something. You, We're, it's something, yeah, yes. Yeah, you're pulling something. We're Got pulling it. yes. Gotcha. So uh, talking about parades, since you're always in parades, you probably don't even have a parade spot. Like most people, I can ask them immediately, like, "Where's your parade spot?" They'd be like, second and violence," or you know, right. you don't. You're in the parades. You're well. This last year for homecoming, I wasn't in the parade first year. Oh, because Rome, they didn't have a, eighth, a seventh grade, eighth grade um, football team. Tra- no, uh, they never have a junior high float, which oh, is really, really odd. That's interesting. But uh, Trace had a float, but the coaches rode with Jamie this year. Gotcha. So I, I got the boot. Oh, you got kicked out. I did. Oh. I did. It was Jamie and the Zach Pack. The Zach Pack. Yeah. So Jamie has three assistant coaches. Okay. On his little league team. And it's Zach Olson, Zach Clymer, and Zach Seifert. Get out of here. For real. So it was Jamie and the Zach Pack. <laughs> Jamie <and> Zach. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's good. That's it's good. great so- for two years now. So where was your parade spot then? Uh, in front of the Merc, naturally. Ah, uh, on yeah. the back of my golf cart because I did drive my golf. You cart drove around. your golf cart to work, <laughs> parked in front of your store, and then sat on the golf cart. Yes, but it was also my birthday that day. Oh, okay. So super special. Yes. Got gotcha. you. And it was a big birthday. What? What's a big birthday? I was. I turned forty. Oh. Yes. How do you feel? Uh, forty. <laughs> <laughs> what does 40 feel like is it did, does it feel different from 39 um well that day 40 felt awesome the next day 40 felt not awesome oh so like 40 in a day 40 in a day 24 hours in 24 hours in like 40 is- 40 felt awful because I celebrated 40 all day, 40. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I but understand. it was super fun because during the parade, I got lots of happy birthdays. Oh, yeah. Like, did, yes. you, have, did you pin money to you? I did not, but I wore a tiara. Oh, okay. So yes. that's how people. That's well, how, that and Facebook. You know, Facebook's really oh, good about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. so it did that's say good. that. And then I wore a tiara, and my daughter sat next to me, and she said, she was really annoyed. She said, Mom, I only had, like, three people wish me happy birthday on Facebook, and two of them were family members. (laughs) She said, every float that's gone by has wished you a happy birthday. Oh, my goodness. And I said, well, 
you're only 18. Maybe when you're 40, every float will wish you happy birthday. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 40 is definitely a year where everybody's going to give you definitely some love, right? Well, I will, yes, I yeah, will hope so. Yeah, yeah, everybody's going to be. So, so talking about parades, typically a time to hang out with friends and family, like you just kind of <laughs> mentioned. What else do you and your friends do in Guthrie? Mm, we do a lot of kids stuff. You know, really everything is centered around kids. We do like to get together and have cookouts and sit around the table and play games and hang out. Gotcha. Really. But- yeah, but when you're in this stage of life, everything kind of centers around those kiddos and and your friends with kiddos, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we all have kids. So, you know, if we're getting together, we're getting together and we're hanging out and we're all going to sit around a table and goof off and play some sort of card game. Whoever brought a card game, we're going to play it. Gotcha. Gotcha. But you also uh, are lake people, right? We are lake people. We like to do that during the summertime. So... If it's the summertime, we're going to be at the lake. And I'm going to meet Jamie there because I work on Saturdays. Okay. So is he is he already there from Friday night or, or do, you go, do you go down Saturday and then he then you meet him there? He might be there from like Thursday night. Oh, really? Okay. He's, he's like, out. He says, this Trace, is, let's go. This it's is time serious. to go. Like, this, I'm out. But you're all lazy like people. Is that how you define it? Uh, yes. Okay, we're pontooners. Pontooners. It's a different kind of. Is Yes. You're we're, not. Fast. We're like not you. fast. No, mm-mm. no, no, no. We, we're, we're the kind of people who like to get out there and just hang out. Gotcha. Yes. Because that, and he added extra speakers. So our tower that used to house, uh, um, you know, an extra cord to pull a, a tube, no longer pulls a tube because Jamie decided to add tower speakers. So now we're a loud Lazy oh, boat. Loud lazy boat. <laughs> LL. You are LL. A LLB. <laughs> loud lazy boat people are yes. coming down the lake. Yes. They, they are here. Listen, they're ready too. Yeah. They're like, here comes Jamie. Here he comes. Just booming. <laughs> yes. So is it like, is it uh, loud music with bass or loud music? Like, what kind of music are we talking? Oh, no, we have a sub on there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you all are booming. Yes. That is so funny. <laughs> So funny. All right. So I got a couple of questions I'm going to ask just kind of help people get to know who you are. Okay. So um, what would you rather take a road trip or fly? A fly. I want to get there, but my husband road trips. Really? So I lose every time. So y'all are road tripping. Yes. (laughs) It's so annoying. You would rather just uh, jump on the plane, get there and let's do what we're doing. Yes. Okay. I want to get there. He's like, hey, look at those eight deer over there. I'm like, what? I was asleep. There were deer? There were- <laughs> what? I'm like, why are you looking over there? Look over there. Look at the and road. Why did You're you driving. Count them? You're How did driving. You- we yeah. were going 90. How did you count eight? That's good. That's good. <laughs> now, we kind of talked about this. Uh, it sounds like you are, well, let me just ask. Dinner at the house or go out to eat? Who's cooking? <laughs> <laughs> you, who's cooking out of you and Jamie or who's cooking like just in general? Like Yeah, so um Explain. If, if, if we're going to a friend's house and they're cooking. You're good. Yeah. But if it's at the house, let's go out <laughs> to eat. No, I don't mind. Um I cook most of the time. Oh, you do? Yes. Well, when you have that many people. Well, I do most of cooking all the time. Friday night's pizza night. Oh, okay. So we're going to have pizza on Friday. Everybody's excited about having pizza on Friday. Uh, if excited or not, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You, so. you, got, you can choose. We you got plenty choose. of pizza opportunities here in Guthrie, America. You you can pick one. Pick one of those pizza places. Pick one. We are have a pizza. Do you all have one that you all, we won't say is your favorite, but maybe you tend to frequent more um we usually frequent domino's more okay trace's favorite is uh papa john's oh you know what have we had papa john's since it's been here we we don't do a lot of pizza but i I used to love papa john's they they got the laziest drivers so like you can't you gotta go get it and it's on the west side got you like the west like (laughs) like you got to drive there you can't get in your uh 
on your golf cart and get but you're there. But you're acting like it's so far, right? It's on the west, <laughs> the west side. side. Like, like I don't drive there all the time. Well, the west side is probably just as close as, uh, what do you call it? Domino's. Domino's. Domino's got really fast delivery, though. Oh, they deliver. They do. do. Okay, got you, got you, got you. They yeah, do. They, they're probably on a different system. I feel like Papa John's is locally owned, like the franchise, where Domino's is probably still corporate. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm just I'm just making stuff up right now. Um, I have no idea. But sometimes I feel like, you know, like um I don't, uh, Pizza Hut, you, their original crust is always bomb. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like that. But if you want cracker pizza, the super thin pizza, Domino's is where it's at. Domino's is it. Yeah. Gotcha. If I'm gonna oh, have, yeah, they have those that's things a school. really, yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah. thin pizza, yeah. uh-huh. I usually pick that one. Yeah. It makes you feel a little bit better about eating pizza. Oh, except for when you eat the whole thing. <laughs> she still feels <laughs> the same. Because the whole pizza. You're like, I just she ate, the, ate the, whole, the whole pizza. I ate the whole pizza, but I feel a little bit better because it was so thin. Yeah. Whereas you could have just eaten two pieces. Two. Of regular pizza. All right, here's the next one. Netflix or go to the movies? Um... Man, that's really hard. You gotta pick Are there one. any kids at home? <laughs> <laughs> you rather just chill and because you can watch whatever movie you want. Man, kids control everything. Don't they, they do. Um, I would probably like to go to the movies. Gotcha. Um, Netflix is convenient. Yeah. But I really want to see the new Avatar. It's good. I would want to go so bad. It's three hours though. I don't, I don't even care. Yeah. I could watch that for three hours. Yeah, it was good. I was ten, surprised. Ten minutes in, my husband would be asleep. Yeah. I thought that's how I would be, but I stayed up the whole time. That, no, I could, like, legit, it doesn't matter what it is. Ten minutes in, he's going to be asleep. Like, do I want to pay that much money for my husband's amazing nap? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. That's a and great. And I'll be doing this the whole time. Yeah. Snoring. That- yeah, <laughs> yes, that's it. That is it. Okay, so so you're going to the movie. We know you want to see Avatar. All right, here's Tupac, dead or alive? I'm conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me. Why are you conflicted? What are you thinking? Listen, I it was definitely, okay. It was definitely set up. Okay. The 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 uh, the shooting the shooting was a setup for sure it was for sure it was okay. set up it was set up it, but if he's still alive then did, why did they do it what was the setup for were they was he trying to avoid something <laughs> mm, okay so here's what I okay they were already making most of his money anyways yeah which is why I feel like he could be dead because. Well, he could still be making royalties, but even the royalties on his stuff now is not the is, is no. Yeah. And he's bold. He wouldn't just stay in hiding. Yeah, true. Like I'm with you. He's extra. Yeah, I'm with you. Like he, Tupac ain't gonna go hide somewhere. No. Not the Tupac that we know. No. And, yeah. No. He, no. He's just gonna be uh-huh. like, okay, I'm gonna go live undercover somewhere and just be okay. No, no he way. was extra. <laughs> He was like, let, let me be in the middle of everything in front of everyone. I'm, I'm going to be it. I'm a, It's me. Yes. So yes. Jamie's here with you. Jamie is saying what? Did you, Did Jamie think he's dead too? We go through it. Okay. We go back and forth. Oh, and if he's dead or alive. Yes. I'm but I have it. friends that are legit like he's alive. like, And he's in Cuba. <laughs> And Why you know, is everybody who's still alive in Cuba? In Cuba, because we weren't allowed to go there for so long. Oh, right? yeah. So that's the place you go, and that's where you go because Americans can't go there. Can't like they, they were cut off for so long, right? Got you. Like that's why all the cars are still old. It's like time capsule, Cuba. Not like, anymore, but, though. No, but why would you go to Cuba? Why would you go to Cuba? Like uh, to visit? Yeah, no. But to stay there? No. Plus. Tupac was a little bit bougie. He would not pick Cuba. <laughs> I'm like, there's so many other places he could pick. He would be in Paris. He would, but then he'd have to change everything about him. Like, yeah. there's no way he could just be like, you can't I'm not Tupac anymore. He looks like Tupac. Yeah. Although, I will say that my niece had on a Tupac shirt. Same niece plays trombone, right? Okay. 
What, but, where did she get a Tupac? That's what I was like. <laughs> that's what, okay. Right? First off, I was like, Abby, I like your shirt. Then Jamie said, do you even know who that is? Uh-huh. And she's the- like, yeah, it's Tupac. He said, name a song. And she was like, Is it really just one? How about a state name? Give me a state name. Just just one. <laughs> like one state happens to be on the West Coast. Like just let me give you a hint. Like so many hints. Is she getting <laughs> nope? I'm oh. Like, That's it. Gotta take shirt off. Can't yeah. wear it. Oh, she didn't know one. Not one. I'm like, you can't wear it. You might know the person. Wow. If you don't, at least if know, you don't one, know the song. At least California look. Come, come. At least <laughs> come on. At least their mama. Right. I would at least think she would know Dear Mama. No. Nope. No. Nope. I'm like, funny. if you if you don't at least one. My son had on the ice. I need to ask my son that. He had on the ice cube t shirt. I'm like Oh, you know he does not know Ice Cube song. I was like, where did you get like, like again? Where did you get I that? I can name a movie <laughs> yes. or a TV show. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I did watch Next Friday last night. But I think it was <laughs> I, <laughs> But I think his t shirt was for him as a rapper, not like one of his movies. Not like hanging out with Day Day. Yeah, no, it wasn't nothing <laughs> like that. In in uh but my daughter had on a George Michael t shirt. Really? Yeah. I'm like, I don't think I need to ask her too. Does she know? She may, because I think she listens to like she, 80s music. Yeah, she probably does. Yeah, she's a uh, she likes 80s music. So. I could see that. Yeah. I can see yeah. that. Should she she's working at Boutique 206 she now. Is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I talked yeah. to Laura the other day. She wasn't there whenever I went in, but she told me she was working there. She's yeah. super sweet. Yeah, she's super sweet. Yeah. yeah. She is. Like super I said, sweet. I'm an equal opportunity shopper. I was yes. in there by yes. Boutique 206. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. No, that's good. That's the way we should be supporting yes. each other. Yes. Uh so are you, this is the last question, are you a custom out or kill them with a kindness kind of person? Depends on the person. <laughs> What does that what does that mean? It depends on the person. It depends on the person. Okay. If it's my sister. <laughs> you're giving it to she her. She's gonna get it. Oh my goodness. That is hilarious. All That's right. Hilarious. But if it's like a random Yeah, you're gonna give them the kind pity in the community that is just trying to be hateful to be spiteful. I'm gonna I'm going to be the nicest lady she's ever met every single time. You're going to give them a little kindness. Every time. That's good. That's good. Usually I try to, I usually I choose kindness, but sometimes, sometimes the nerve. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> no, no way. Uh, tell me what choose Guthrie means to you. Um, Choose Guthrie means choose community. Mm-hmm. It means choose our town. It means Choose to support what we have here. Yeah. That's what it means. And us, I mean everybody. Yeah. Because everything you do here invests in every person here. Mm. That's good. And, I mean, you could choose somewhere else, but you chose to be here. That's good. And if you choose to be here, do it. Be here. Be in. Be here. Be in. Like, all the way in. Like, volunteer yeah. help like I'm, support it, yes it can be small it doesn't have to be big no i mean give a little bit yeah a little bit goes so far yeah you know you see somebody that is having a hard day go give them a hug you don't have to know that person side hug them you got to be full on yeah yeah right like <laughs> fist bubble yes like yeah. are you High doing bubble. okay yeah. like you know, I'm sorry you're having, you look like you're having a bad day. I hope yeah. your day goes better. I mean, it doesn't have to be much. It can be, it can be very little. Mm. Extend, I don't know, extend some gratitude. Tell them they look great. You can go a long ways. Yes. When you notice somebody did a little bit extra to feel good, tell them. Gotcha. It doesn't hurt. You know, some kid is walking, they got a little bit of extra pep in their step. It's for a reason. Yeah. It's for a reason good that's good yeah tell people where they can find you um well really they can find me at any football game wrestling game (laughs) basketball game because we support all of our kids but no my store is located at 122 west oklahoma gotcha on social media um i'm at cleveland and co on facebook and on instagram i am at cleveland underscore co gotcha Mm -hmm. 
Maneka, thank you so much for all the fun for sure. and all the laughs and letting us know that Tupac is dead. Thank you so much. I mean, sometimes he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the day. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are on a mission to have every story told of those people doing life in Guthrie, Oklahoma, and who are from here. Will yours be next?